Hello and welcome again. In today's episode, we will explain to you the importance and significance of the fifth sacrament, the sacrament of holy matrimony. The family is the basic unit or cell of society and the Christian family is also a major building block of the Orthodox Church. The Church places great importance on families to fulfill its role as a small church as expressed by the Apostle Paul. When St. Paul greeted Priscilla and Aquila, his fellow workers in Jesus Christ, he also greeted the church that is in their house. He also greeted Nymphus and the church that is in his house. The Holy Scriptures tell us that God blessed the marriage from the beginning of time saying, Be fruitful, increase in number, fill the earth. Showing that marriage is part of God's eternal purpose for humanity. Further on in Genesis 2.24 we read, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and they shall become one flesh. Our Lord Jesus Christ reiterated these words when asked if it is lawful for a man to divorce his wife. He continued, so then they are no longer two but one flesh. Therefore what God has joined together let no man separate. Christ forever sanctified marriage by his presence at the marriage of Cana of Galilee. This was the first time Christ performed the miracle and the first time the Theotokos interceded with Christ on behalf of others saying they have no wine and then instructs all humanity Whatever he say to you, do it. St. Paul expressed the sanctity of the sacrament of Christian matrimony, saying, This is a great mystery, and marriage is honorable among all and the bed undefiled. The decision of marriage is the most important decision in youth's life. It is a decision taken to share the most intimate parts of one's being, emotions, body, spirituality, social life, finance, legal issues, time, home, and so forth. With someone else, young people struggle in making that decision. So what are the prerequisites or essentials for a successful marriage? Maturity. Maturity is a prerequisite for marriage, lack of which will endanger the quality of one's decisions. Maturity is a general term that encompasses different levels of maturity, like spiritual maturity, which means walking by the Spirit and not gratifying the desires of the flesh, protects the decision from being fleshly driven. Financial and intellectual maturity prepares us to be responsible in marriage. Physical and psychological maturity is important in ad adapting and preserving harmony within marriage. And social maturity facilitates the inclusion of the new family in society. Another point is seeking the will of God. Seeking the will of God is another important aspect of reaching a correct marriage decision. Without asking the will of God, the person will be in a great loss. Solomon the wise says, House and wealth are inherited from fathers, but a prudent wife is from the Lord. Praying fervently, studying the scripture, seeking spiritual direction, and using intellect make the will of God known to us. Another point is examining the motives. Examining the motives for marriage is extremely important. One common motive among youth is to obtain autonomy and prove individuality. Rebellion against one's own family to protect personal independence cannot be a motive for a successful marriage. Mature discussion with family members, parents in particular, is a part of knowing the will of God. Another common motive among youth is to escape a difficult home environment or from an abusive father. Family problems cannot be a reason for a successful marriage. 
unfortunately most of the time they escape to an uh, an unsuccessful and an unhappy marriage life which may end in disaster therefore motive should be assessed another point is loneliness loneliness is yet another cause for taking a hasty marriage decision some people suffer from loneliness in their lives thinking that marriage will remove that problem they just go ahead and decide to get married in reality Many couples suffer from loneliness even after marriage. A solution to loneliness is best sought in developing good social skills that will help deal with the issue rather than throwing this responsibility on the shoulder of a future spouse. Another point is sexually immoral drives. Sexually immoral drives are another motive for jumping into immature marriage. A lot of youth believe that marriage will help them conduct a pure life. Sadly enough, such individuals end up having outside marriage affairs, thus cheating on their spouses. The only solution to break this bondage is to obtain healing from sexual immorality by allowing the Holy Spirit to fill the heart and sanctify the soul. Moral rectification. Sometimes individuals get involved in sinful, unlawful relationship before marriage. As a result of such an immoral relationship, they become morally and socially forced to commit themselves into marriage bondage to rectify a mistake of pregnancy. Most of the time, immaturity, age and unpreparedness for a long life marriage bondage form a real threat to the stability of their marital life. You should be wise enough not to be involved in such destructive relationships, which will ruin the rest of their lives. Another point is physical beauty. Individuals who are attracted to the beauty of the flesh Take this as a strong reason for marriage. Beauty might, might make one admire the other, but not necessarily satisfy their needs. A lot of individuals who are married to very beautiful wives suffer from unmet psychological and emotional needs. As Solomon the Wise said, Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Another point is compassion-driven marriages. Some people decide to marry out of compassion. They believe that the best way <coughs> to help someone who has suffered in a life is to marry them. It should be remembered that marriage is unity between two souls in the Lord and not a service offered by one person to another. Many marriages suffer from lack of unity because of this reason. Another point is social pressure. Social pressure, either direct or indirect, whether from the family or friends, have led to many to marry without discerning. Most of the time, such marriages end in separation or divorce. An advice to the youth is not to allow themselves to be pressured into a relationship to which they will not be able to be committed the rest of their life. After all, which is better, to remain unmarried or to marry just any person because of social pressure? Another kind of pressure that brings about an unsuccessful marriage is that enforced by a controlling person on a compliant one. The compliant or obedient person who does not know how to say no at the right time will yield to the manipulation of the controlling person thus accepting to enter into an unpromising marriage relationship. Such, ma such marriages will ultimately suffer from unbalanced power in the relationship. Another point is self-pity. After breaking up with a friend or engagement, many individuals rush to get married to prove to the ex-friend that they are lovable and wanted. The danger here rests in the fact that the decision to marry has been focused on the ex-friend, not 
on the, the current spouse. Later on in marriage, they will discover that they had been deluded into the marriage for the sake of relaying a message to the previous friend. Another point is family traditions. Sometimes family traditions play a decisive role in the marriage decision. Many families di dictate choices and preferences to their children for many personal exotic reasons. For example, marrying a relative to keep the inheritance of the family within the family. Such marriages based on materialistic selfish desires will bring about unsuccessful results alienated from any spiritual foundation. Another point is earthly transactions. Some people perceive marriage as a deal from which to draw personal profits such as marrying for the sake of getting the green card or marrying into a rich family or a family of a certain social status. Compatibility between couples is important but not to the extent of turning the marriage into a trade deal. Is there a scale between which marriage decisions are based? Sometimes youth get deluded by the items on the scale upon which they base their choices. Examples of such items are physical beauty, compassion, social pressure, self-pity, family traditions, moral rectification and earthly transactions to name a few. In conclusion, a spiritually mature person who seeks the will of God from the depth of his heart consults his parents and spiritual father who examines his motives thoroughly and uses a wise measuring scale of qualities and attributes will definitely be guided by the Holy Spirit in choosing the person with whom he will share his world the rest of his life. Now let's take a look at the rites of matrimony. The matrimonial rite is divided into three parts. One, the truthful or engagement. Two, the ceremony of marriage. And three, the holy matrimony. Let's look at the first one. The truthful and engagement. It precedes the sacrament of matrimony, but is not of the church's sacraments. The truthful or engagement is a voluntary agreement resulting from a pure and holy love between a man and a woman who accept the, to marry each other willingly and by their own choice. How long, how long should an engagement period be? The engagement period should be between 7 months to 12 months. It is preferable not to extend the engagement for longer than 12 months, as when the engagement period is prolonged, problems may start to occur. So what is the right of the truthful? The deacons proceed the couple into the church, chanting the hymn, O King of Peace. The fiancé, or the female, stands on the right side of her fiancé. And together they proceed to the place assigned for the prayers, whether it be in the church or at home. The priest holds the two rings in his left hand in a red silk ribbon and says the following prayers together with three signs of the crosses. On the first sign of the cross, the priest says, In the name of our Lord, our God and Savior Jesus Christ, the founder of the laws of perfection, we declare at, the, at this orthodox ceremony the betrothal of the blessed orthodox son, his name, to the blessed orthodox daughter, her name. The priest makes the sign of the cross on himself and then on the couple and then on the rings and jewelry, saying, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, Amen. Blessed be God, the Pantocrator, Amen. Then the congregation prays the Our Father. Then he repeats this three times while saying, Blessed be His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, on the second time, and blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete, on the third time. After that, the priest prays the prayer of thanksgiving and upon finishing the deacons chant the hymn Genevran. During the chanting the priest blesses the rings and allow both of them to put them in their fingers 
Then he prays a special prayer for blessings and asking God to complete this celebration in peace. The priest asks that their betrothal be kept pure and legitimate, making them one in mind, soul, and granting them a peaceful and spiritual happiness, shepherded by God. Finally, everyone prays the Lord's Prayer, then the concluding prayer followed by the final blessing. Well, this concludes our episode for today. We will continue our sacrament on marriage in our next episode. God bless you and see you.